The wood, it's always been with me. Every tree that you, you cut down has history. There was a couple trees that fell down that were over 420 years old. And, you know, you go back and that's Christopher Columbus days. You know, wood's like blue jeans, goes with everything, right? That's why you got hardwood floors, it's in your countertops, it's in your, your cabinetry, it's your mantle place, it's feature walls, it's all of those things, because we love wood. It has warmth, it has life to it. Yeah, I did not grow up sawmilling. I grew up cowboying. I mean, farming and cowboying was the only thing we knew. We're just looking for kind of anything different. Like when you're ready for a change, you're, it doesn't really matter what kind of a change. We stepped in here and it was, it was a change. When we first started this, like it started really small, like it's grown now to where we have four full-time employees in here. And now like we bring in a year's supply of wood at a time from the one load at a time we used to do, it's you're talking like 30 loads at a time now. The saw that's in this building, um, when we bought the mill, it had 7,000 hours on it. And now it's just rolled over 22,000 hours. It's kind of small for the production we're doing, but we got a pretty efficient crew in here, so they make it work pretty amazingly. We've replaced every moving part on that thing two or three times, and it cuts as true as the day it was made. Just about everybody we meet that comes in here is like, I used to work in this mill as a kid. There was a Johnson Brothers sawmill. That was the first, the original really big sawmill. And they ran for, quite a few years until they closed it down and this place was closed for quite a while and then we turned it back into a small scale sawmill. So we log everything in the Porcupine Hills because there's mountains and mountains of fur out there, literally. Part of our logging is reforestation, right? It's not an instant thing. You don't see it like as we move out of a block, you know, there's five or six year window in there where we let everything decompose on the ground, whatever waste is left there for fertilizer, and that regrows the new trees. And then they go in and replant everything, and yeah, everything gets reforested. There's nothing more renewable than a tree. There's no better product to build with. Anything manufactured would require, like, cutting down thousands of trees to manufacture that versus just building with the trees. And I had watched guys, you know, get a sawmill on their own and go and reclaim trees off their property and build a cabin and stuff. And so I knew it was an option. And so I called my buddy who's an arborist here in the city. And I said, I'm thinking about getting into, you know, urban sawmilling and reclaiming some of our gorgeous trees. And he said, great, but people always say that. And then they never come and get the lumber. And I said, well, what if I had a couple acre yard and I took everything? He said, that'd work. <laughs> I said, all right, well, let's just do that. Uh, I'm Jacob Dennell, the uh, owner of the Bearded Ox Timber Company. We're a local company that uh, salvages urban lumber and turns it into furniture. I, I think people are becoming more aware that quality actually matters. You know, we got garbage dumps around the world filling up every day of stuff we used to use. And I think that more people are realizing that it's worth it to me to get something that's gonna last. That, that is something that I will give to my grandchildren. That's the difference. But I think what people also like is they can come in and hand pick their lumber. And they get to walk in, go down the wall of slabs and say, that's the one I want. Uh, you don't really get to do that in your, if you're buying mass produced furniture. Woodworking is woodworking, and the biggest variable is the wood. There is a limited amount of knowledge of how to work with Southern Alberta trees. It's vastly different than going uh, to the local hardware store and buying some two by fours and banging something together, or even nice dimensional lumber from somewhere. Uh, every tree in this building is from uh, Southern Alberta. The biggest issue in Lethbridge is we live in a desert.
And so even dry lumber from uh, British Columbia, Ontario, in the United States, it's not dry for Lethbridge. No two pieces are the same, ever. It doesn't happen. They all have their own characteristics. And when I mill lumber here, I cut it for as pretty as it can look. I'm cutting rifts on, I'm cutting through the crotches, I'm looking for the craziest piece of lumber that we can find to make something really beautiful out of. And so for me, I think it's that. Cutting big logs on the mill, it's like mining gold. You think it could look good, and then you get a few slabs in, you start getting to the heart of that tree, and you cut it open, and you know, it's loud, telehandlers running, saws going, chainsaws are going, but you know, we all got ear protection in and we'll flip over a massive slab and then you just stare at each other. You look at the wood, you look at each other and you go, oh my gosh, that's gonna be something great someday. This is my home and my sanctuary. I find it brings me a lot of joy. So you can't ask for more than that. I actually stole Jacob out of the market and drug him to my house and said, could you build me a table? And he said, of course I can build you a table. And of course he had a vision right away that, that it would be a piece of art. Jacob called me one day and said, I just got a call and I, I have this large elm tree that I think will be perfect for your house. It fell down, I believe, or was taken down in the research station. I was standing on the ground when they took it out. Uh, that whole tree got used from, from top to bottom. So uh, it's sad when they got to come out, um, when they're hazardous, but better than seeing them buried in, in, the, in the coulee down in the river bottom or burnt. Uh, it's nicer to see them put to use, and, and that table is a stunner. The elm tree really, as it struck a chord in my heart because of my mom's love for elm trees. And so that tree basically became our tree. People ask me, where did this table come from? And it's such a joyous thing to say that it was made by this wonderful crew and man that, you know, live here in this area and that you're supporting this local artisan it just it's wonderful it feels really nice to do that uh, and the beauty of working with trees from lethbridge is that that life stays here in the city